Hey all, I just wanted to go through some extra examples of deductive reasoning. So I'm going to go through some law of detachment, some law of contrapositive, and some law of syllogism. So remember detachment, we're given we're given a statement if P then Q. And then we'll, if we're given some other statement P, we can conclude, so I would say, therefore, Q. So I'm, I want to look at the statements I'm given first. So I'm going to um, cross out my if and then. And that helps me see that a triangle is a right triangle is P. A triangle has 190 degree angle is Q. And now I want to look at this. Trying, this says triangle ABC is a right triangle. So being a right triangle is what P talks about. So this is an example of P. So this follows my pattern. I have a if P then Q. I have an example of P. And so my conclusion should be about Q. And I want to tie it into what this thing is about. So this is, we're going to talk about triangle ABC. And then we want to say something about Q. So triangle ABC has one 90 degree angle. So I can make that conclusion because I have this pattern. And the law of detachment says if you have that pattern, then you could say something about Q. Let's try another one. Again, I'll cross out if and then. Oh, there's no then, but there should be. Cats prowl will be P. Mice will scatter will be Q. So here in this statement, I have mice are scattering. That's related to Q. So I have if P then Q and Q. That doesn't follow the pattern of detachment. And so therefore we can't make any conclusions. And so if you think about it, um, mice could be scattering for a bunch of reasons. Scattering means they're running away. They could be scattering because there's a dog. They can be scattering because there's people. Okay, so we can't make the assumption that cats are prowling. If you don't know what that means, it just means cats are out sort of hunting for the mice. Here we have another if then to start. We'll cross out the if then. The light is flashing yellow. That's my P. You may drive through with caution. That's Q. And then it says Jose sees that the light is flashing yellow. So in this case, the light flashing yellow has to do with P. So Jose seeing a flashing light that's yellow is a P, an example of P. So I have my pattern. And so I can conclude something about Q. So I can make some conclusion about driving through with caution. So we're going to say that Jose drives through with caution. So he saw that the yellow light was flashing. And so he can drive through with caution. Because we followed the pattern of detachment. Oops. And I have one last one here. I like to get rid of my if then. So x is greater than 7 is p. The absolute value of x is greater than 7 is q. Remember, absolute value is if you plug in any number, positive or negative, the result is positive. x equals 8. So I want to know, is x equals 8 an example of being greater than 7? It is. So this is an example of p. And so therefore, we conclude the absolute value of 8 is greater than 7, which is true because the absolute value is of 8 is 8, and 8 is bigger than 7. This one is a little more sort of math technical. So let's try some contrapositive. Remember contrapositive, we have a if P then Q, and then we get a not Q, and we can make a conclusion then based on contrapositive that not 
something about not p, so the opposite of p. So I've used the same examples, um, sort of. I've changed them a little bit. So uh, I've kept this first statement the same. So a triangle is a right triangle is P. The triangle has one 90 degree angle is Q. And then I have here ABC, triangle ABC is not a right triangle. So again, uh, P is about being a right triangle. This says triangle ABC is not a right triangle. That's an example of not P. Well, the law of contrapositive says you have if P then Q, which we do have, but then you need a example of the opposite of Q in order to make a conclusion. We don't have that, so we would say no conclusion. So we just have to follow the pattern, and the more you write the pattern, the more you'll commit it to memory. So again, we have our mice scattering. Cats prowling is P, mice scattering is Q. And here it says mice are not scattering. So remember, mice scattering is Q, mice not scattering is not Q. So we end up having the pattern for the law of contrapositive. We have if P then Q. We have an example of the opposite of Q. And so we can conclude something about the opposite of P, which in this case would be cats are not prowling. So we know for sure if the mice are not scattering that the cats are not prowling. Here we have the uh, flashing yellow light is P, driving through with caution is Q. And then it says Jose may not drive through with caution. Well, driving through with caution was Q. Not driving through with caution is not Q. So we have our pattern again for a contrapositive, sorry. And so we can conclude something about the opposite of P. So since Jose is not driving through with caution, then the light must not be flashing yellow. So the light is, isn't flashing yellow. So it followed the pattern of the law of contrapositive. Again, the more you write that law, the more you'll commit it to memory. Here again, x greater than 7 is p. Absolute value of x greater than 7 is q. And then it says x is equal to 7. And that is sort of an example of not p. And this doesn't follow the pattern of contrapositive, and so I'm going to say there's no conclusion. You should always also check to see does it follow the pattern of detachment. If it was um, detachment, then this would have to be um, regular P, and that it doesn't follow that pattern either. So when you get to practice, I'm going to ask you um, to just look at statements and not tell you which law to check. So you have to check them all. So if you let's go over syllogism quick. Syllogism, I have two if then statements. If P then Q, and then if Q then R. So that conclusion of the first statement is the same as the hypothesis of the second statement. And so if you have that pattern, then you can make a conclusion that if P then R is true. So let's check this one. Now I have new examples. So in my first one, you took calculus as P. You took algebra 2 as Q. In my second statement, you took algebra 2 shows up again. That's Q again. You took algebra 1. That's a new statement. We'll call it R. So I have this pattern. If P, then Q. If Q, then R. So I can make a conclusion that's a new if-then statement. If P, then R. So what I like to do is cross out Q, because I'm just going to eliminate it, and say, if you took calculus, then you took algebra 1.
And this only works if I have this pattern, PQ, QR. Let's try another one. Tree has rough bark as P. Tree is unhealthy as Q. Tree has rough bark. Well, that's P again. The tree might be a birch tree. That's something new. We'll call it R. So in this case, we have PQ, PR. That doesn't follow my pattern. So I'm going to say no conclusion is possible here. OK, don't try to uh, be creative here. Just follow the pattern. If it doesn't follow the pattern, then it's no conclusion. In this one, uh, a quadrilateral has four equal sides as P. The quadrilateral is a rhombus as Q. I start the second if-then statement with a quadrilateral being a rhombus again, and that is Q. And then it says the quadrilateral is a square. That's new. That's R. So I have PQ and QR. So I can get rid of the Q and combine P and R. So if, and I'm, I'm going to shorten this for time's sake, if a quadrilateral has four equal sides, then the quadrilateral is a square. So if I have that pattern P, Q, Q, R, then I can get rid of Q and put P and R into a new if-then statement. Sort of like cutting out the middleman. The last one, you like to snow ski as P, you like the mountains as Q. This one starts with you like the mountains. Well, that was Q, so I call it Q again. You will like Colorado. That's a new statement I'll call R. So I have PQ, QR. So I'm going to cut out Q and say that if you like to snow ski, then you will like Colorado. Again, that's because I had the pattern PQ, QR, and I can make that conclusion based on syllogism that P, if P, then R. So I hope that helps. Um, if you still have questions, make sure you email or you ask in class or you come to office hours and I can help.